Welcome, grognards, to this particular episode where we're going to be going through what a pre, a, a, what is it, a pre, um, pre-warp start is. <laughs> pre-warp. That was the word I was trying to think. This is the most basic of the starts when you're playing distant worlds. It doesn't matter what faction you are. I'm just going to go through things to consider when you actually first come into a pre-warp game of distant worlds. And so in this instance, we've got a, a human world in through here into CN4, uh, hardly got any infrastructure at all. We know nothing at all. We don't even know what's over through here on this particular moon. Uh, so where do you start if you're a new player? <laughs> the game will prompt you about certain things, like we've got a, a new leader, for example. New prime minister has appeared, so you'll always get these sorts of things. We'll just dismiss that message. But um, yeah, what's the starting point? Now, I guess the, um, the low down or the, the quick and dirty aspect of it is... I've mean, paused the game. So first thing to do is pause the game if, when you consider. The quick and dirty thing is just to unpause the game and let it just do what it wants to do, basically. Uh, it will do stuff, it will advise stuff, and it will actually then just go and play itself. So that's one thing you can do. There's a few seconds there. Just You don't have to worry about doing things. But if you're one of those people like me who do worry about things and want to just make sure that you've got things ticking over the way that you want them to tick over... Let's just go through some steps that, or some tips that may help you in this phase of the game. Um, it's a good idea to start with the potential problems you're going to have. Now, if we have a quick look out through here, we know nothing about our system. It's a normal system, so we know ultimately we're going to get all the resources, that the, the basic resources we require, are going to be available here. So one thing I like to look for straight away is where is the gas giant? If there's more than one, uh, I better try to find out what's going on. Now, the, the gas giant is going to be a large planet, like this one over through here. This is a gas giant. There's no other gas giants. In fact, we can have a look down through here. We've got the main sequence star down the bottom there. We've got the uh, a, a carbonaceous planet back over through there, a rocky silicon moon, an ocean planet through there, a rocky desert planet that way. We've got our planet there, the continental planet. Uh, we've got a rocky metallic moon around us as well, so very much like an Earth-like in through there. Uh, we've got a gas giant there. It's the only gas giant in the system. Uh, we've got a, sulf a, a sulfur volcanic moon there as well. We have a ice moon over there. We have a uh, rocky asteroid group back over this side. And we have another rocky asteroid group over this side. So we've got a few different things. And there's an unknown ship there by the looks of things as well. It was just telling us. So we didn't sort of see that. There it is. So there's a ship there that we know nothing about. So we've seen it like on, you know, the the people on the planet in pre-warp, we've got nothing at all. Like all we've got is telescopes, essentially. And so we've seen the ship. We're aware of it. We don't know what it is. Look, it could be a threat. We don't know at this point in time. We don't have to really worry too much about that at this stage. Uh, we also have a couple of ships that have been built right from the very, very start. But the first thing I like to do is just figure out, OK, where's my fuel source going to come from? And where is my steel source going to come from? Because they're the two... Uh, resources at the start of the game that are going to be are going to be important to you. And we click on resources. We did this before, I think, in episode where we talked about the um, the game start options, where I sort of went through what to do if you got in a trying or harsh system, what to look for. And we're going to have zeros here all the way through because we haven't explored anything yet. Now the game will just do that automatically, and uh, so that's one aspect that we sort of need to be need to be conscious of. But eventually, we're going to. This is going to be. One way or another, this is going to be where we get our fuel from because we're in a normal system. Now, if we're in a harsh or trying system, it may not be a Caslon supply at all. It may be that we have to go outside. The next thing I like to have a bit of a look at, so I sort of have a bit of a feel, like this is a long distance for us in the, in the pre-warp to try to protect an entity back over here from pirates and protect our home system from pirates as well. And so pirates are our major concern at the very, very start of the game. Now, if we start to sort of scroll back, where are we in the galaxy? Is this a playable region? It's okay. Like there's uh, there's certainly areas around. There's a few things I like to turn on at this at this stage. So the first thing I like to turn on is the nebulas, so I can see where they actually are. So these are the choke points. We, we, so we're not going to be able to break through here all that effectively. So we actually now have a line that way. At least that then shows us where the spiral arms actually are in the galaxy as well. And so we don't have a real easy way to get through into this system. But all of this. It's certainly within our within our realm that we can sort of go for, and hopefully we don't have another faction too close to us on either side. It looks like we're sort of on the edge of something back over here. There's fairly long distances, so 
just get a bit of a feel. If you're finding that you're really isolated, particularly if you're playing like a cluster game and you're not inside a cluster, start again. So just uh, if you're not if you're not happy with your start, just uh, make sure that you do actually have planets around that are reasonably close that you can sort of get access to. Anyway, this is actually looking fine. This is going to be okay for us in this instance. So that's one thing we do is just turn on those nebulas. There's a few things I like to turn on here. I mean, by default, it should actually have the ship travel vectors on. It should have the location badges, the basic location badges on. That will be okay as well. At different times, you'll turn on different aspects as well, like exploration. This can be a bit annoying to turn that one on. We, we like Eventually, that will be something we may flick on, just have a bit of a look at it and then flick it back off again. Uh, one thing I also like to do is to actually go and in, instead of having the default view, so change the view, I like to have freeform. That way I can just use the middle mouse button and sort of look at different angles uh, so I can get sort of the angle that I'm interested in. Uh, so that's just one thing that I like to do. Also, um, you can get lost with what your direction is. Like if you're sort of coming in and zipping around and having a bit of a look at different angles and sort of uh, trying to sort of figure out what's where and sort of think, oh, okay, that's a that's a really cool looking little planet. What does it look like there? And then you sort of come back out again and you're thinking, oh, geez. Where am I? You know, like you get a bit lost. A tip for this one is to um, is to use the shift and then the Q and E keys will then rotate into locks of um, of 45 degrees. So if I go uh, shift Q, uh, it's going to be now facing south. And if we go back to galactic north, it's going to essentially end up where we were at the start. So we're back to where we were with Galactic North. So that's Shift Q. Shift E will then take it back the other way. So you can just do those to just get your camera back to a, a common area. I do that all the time, actually, just so that it sort of always looks the same, uh, just so I don't get lost. Uh, so it's sort of like, it's always, it's like, for example, always having the, the map around the right way. If you're used to sort of reading a map, uh, that would sort of be what you'd end up doing. So it doesn't sort of, you know, so you don't leave it rotated in, in weird and wonderful locations. So anyway, that's that's one thing I'd like to have a bit of a look at to see where we actually are. Now, the pirates will come when we start to get developed. So we don't have to rush too much with the pirates, but I like to be a little bit prepared for them. So I know I'm going to have to protect this area. I know I'm going to have to protect this area. And if we have a bit of a look at this actual planet, our continental planet here has it does actually have steel um, which is great it has Yaris marble now this is going to often you're not going to know okay what's important or what's not important if you're new to the game uh, initially what we really want is we want to have resources that um, that are, are for construction essentially and we want to be we want to be getting fuel we want to be getting uh, steel and we want to be getting carbonite and polymer, I guess, would be the other ones that we've sort of been wanting to look for. So we've got steel. We actually have carbonite here as well. Playing as a humans, quite often carbonite will then be found on continental planets or, and polymer will as well. There's still one more that we don't know about. So we have to then find out more about that. Now, I'll talk a little bit about what this is when we talk about surveying and, uh, and sort of exploration. But at this stage, we, we have very, very rudimentary exploration of our home planet. We don't know much about it. Slowly over time, just by inhabiting the planet, we will pick up more and more information about the planet itself. We also have around the planet an asteroid belt. I mean, the asteroid belt is unexplored at the moment, but this will also contain steel. So steel is often found in asteroid belts. And so we're going to find steel in around our home world. This is going to be fantastic. We're not going to have to really worry too much about steel because that's going to be very, very close to where we can protect from the pirates. So really the only places we have to then try to start to look after is the home world and this other planet back over here eventually. Now, I like to actually just confirm that that is actually there. Let's have a look at the ships that we actually have. So we've got like three different ships. The ang the, uh, the the shape of the ships actually does does matter. Now, initially, we've got like a space dock back into here, which can then go and build different things. Now, this is being constructed at the moment. So this is under construction. This one here is probably under construction as well. Yep, it's 32% with its construction. And this one here is also under construction. This is a mining ship, which we have no control over. And so... The private sector will start to build its own ships. We don't have to do anything if we don't want to. And and really, in reality, I, I tend not to worry too much at the start of a pre-warp game in building anything. It's probably more important that we try to get our growth and, uh, and money up, which means we don't want to be building too much. When the pirates first come, um, I do like to have a few ships ready. Let's just talk about that, because um, if you... A big part of, of what you then need to go and do is design ships or have ships available. If we go and click on this button over here, which is ship construction, then we click on this button here, which is ship design. 
you'll see we've hardly got anything we can actually do. And so if we have a bit of a look at this one, the only actual, um, we've got a few different things we can do here. We've got all types. If I go to state ships, state ships are the ones we're going to be putting into fleets or making good use of. So if I just click on state ships and through here, it'll get rid of all the civilian ships and bases, which we don't want to be worrying about. So we've got three different types of ships that we can build ourselves. We have the survey, survey ships down through here, the exploration ships. I'm just going to let the AI look after that design. We've got some construction ships up through here as well. Again, the AI will do a good job of, of actually designing that one through there. And the Escort is the only ship that we have available that we can actually design that can go into combat. Now, the pirates are always going to be at least one level of tech above you, which means they're going to be able to outclass you very, very easily in, in, uh, in battle. Now, initially, it's no real point getting Escorts because it's going to take them way too long to, to not have hyperdrive to actually do anything. So I would suggest not doing any designs of the of the escorts at this point in time. Just let the game run forward. But eventually, once you've actually got your first lot of tech, you will need to do that one. Let's talk about technology. So this is your tech tree in through here. And if we go and click, so this is the next one across, research. We've got the uh, click to explore the research tree back in through this side. And you can see there, until we actually, the way I've got it set up now, I'm not actually seeing the next lot of um, technology. You can have that turned on so you can see what's actually coming. But these are all different sorts of weaponry that we can sort of go and get. We don't know anything at all about these. We did start with missile weapons and we started with kinetic weapons. So we actually started with a couple of different weapons that we can make use of. By the way, when you see these sort of symbols, it means that that particular character, this is an Ikaru character, cannot use that particular weapon. So they're not allowed to use bombardment weapons, as an example. Uh, so there's nothing to do with us. It just means that that particular race cannot actually make use of that. Um, then we've got, uh, for example, as we come down, we've got sort of basic reactors we start with. We don't know anything at all about warp fields at this point in time. It's going to take us six and a half years to research this one. Uh, and it's important we get that as soon as we possibly can. So this is actually fairly important. Uh, we've got uh, early energy deflectors back into here as well. This is like shields, so we don't even have shields at this stage. Uh, we've got some engines, like we've got basic ion engines uh, that we can make use of. We have uh, directional thrusters. Again, the, the AI will do a good job of designing things for you, so don't worry too much about what these are. I will talk about these when we talk about ship design, but um, at this stage, that's all okay. So at this point in time, we're really only just going for early warp field experiments. The other things you may want to consider getting at this early stage would be to um, go for system patrol ships, potentially, which will give you a bigger ship, which is a frigate. Actually, not, maybe not so much right now. Just go through what's most important. The, uh, the shielding would be important to get. I'll just go and throw that one in there. Every time you click on one of these, it's going to chew up a bit of your money. Uh, we've got good starting weapons, so we don't need to do anything else there. Uh, so we'll leave that one. That's for the humans. It may be different for other things. This is armor, so we want, we wanted to get that as well for our ships. So these are sort of looking after the actual ships that we actually have. Uh, if we come back down... Um, target tracking and countermeasures are also important, but I'll come back to those in a minute. As we come back down through here, eventually we're going to be wanting to get planetary governance, uh, but we won't do that one just yet. Uh, we'll just get a few more along the way. So, okay, so then we'll just queue up one or two more. Uh, I'll, I'll, we'll queue up these target tracking and countermeasures. In fact, probably so it should be late now. Once you actually click on them, they're already in there. So, so that's and that's sort of the order that we're going to do. I might put countermeasures. Countermeasures is your survivability. Target tracking is your is your actual targeting. And to be honest, I shouldn't have clicked on that one because I'm not going to be putting that on ships for quite some time. So that was a bit of a waste. All right, so the early uh, warp field experiments. Now, one thing I can do with these, if I go and click on that one, this is over through here. It's going to take me uh, six and a half years to get this one. But you'll see down the next one after the where it's, it tells you how long it's going to take, it's got a crash program of 7,500 credits. So... I'm going to actually go and click on that. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. This is the warp field experiments. When I click on this one, it's going to be about the same price, 7,500. So initiating a crash research in for the early warp field will cost the project 7,500. This project cannot be cancelled after these costs have been paid. Are you sure you want to pay these costs? Yes, I do. What this will then do is, you can see there, six and a half years. I'll pay the costs. We now have a little stopwatch down the bottom there. When I hover over it, the time has been halved. It does two things. It halves the time. If it does three things, it halves the time. It um, it also then gives us the. Um, uh, it means we we won't accidentally uh, research the wrong thing. You can actually have problems where where your research is 
is stymied for whatever reason. So this one just means that it's going to be done uh, securely within that time frame. There's not going to be any sort of mistakes with the actual research itself, and that does happen a lot with uh, with research. So we'll just get that one done. That's now half the time we get the skip drive, which means we can then start to design chips after that one. We'll just exit the exit that one there. But again, if you're a new player, don't bother designing chips. If you are a, um, a you know if you do know what you're doing, then yes, design the ships. Now I'm just going to let the game run. I'm just going to put it on high. Now I'd suggest that you don't do this. Here we go. So we've now finished our first construction. We've got the Valiant Smuggler. Just dismiss that one. So that's our first ship. We're going to get a lot of these sorts of messages that just sort of, you know, push us along a little bit with what's going on through here. Democracy, uh, due to our chosen government, we have gained insight into uh, space construction and expanded space stations. So let's uh, have a look at that one. If we now go back and have a look, we've actually now just done some extra research there because we started off as a democracy. And so this often you'll get some, some bonus tech. And so we end up getting space construction research, which gives us better construction yards. I'll just pause this for now. And a small spaceport version two. So we've actually now just got a bit more tech. We also got the expanded space stations research. We've got the large mining station and the resort station. And so to see that one, if we just go back into the research tree and then go down to the actual things, we've actually got these two here. So we got those because we were a democracy. Now, if we're playing it as pre-warp with other factions, we'll have different ones that will then come in. So, we, you know, And you can find out what they are when, before you start the game. It'll then tell you. I should probably show you that just so you can sort of see what I mean. But anyway, these come in. We, we're always going to get these. And that just means that we've at least then can sort of start to build more civilian infrastructure or at least starport infrastructure as well. So that means we can sort of come back into um, into Isian 4. It is worth actually building a base. So we'll just go, we've got a couple of designs we can build in through here. We've got 19,000, I'll build a large one. And so it's just gonna to start to build off to the side. So do that as well, fairly early. In fact, it's saying build the base. So yes, build the base. And we just did that ourselves anyway, but that's okay. We'll just, uh, we'll decline that one. It's still gonna allow that one to be built. and. It, as we just let the game develop, it will then just prompt us for what we need to do. Uh, so it will just sort of keep on playing along and uh, we don't have to really worry too much about it. Now, it will also do some other things as well. And um, as I say, we're just going to let things sort of develop in through here for a, a little bit of time uh, until we end up getting the skip drive. And at that point, we're then going to start to build a little bit of a fleet to take on individual pirate ships. We don't want to be taking on fleets of pirates. Just individual ships will be enough for us. And we're going to need about five of those little escorts to be able to do that. Now, I don't need to design them. I can just literally, literally tell the game, build me some based on that one. Now, I'm just going to race the game forward at this point in time because uh, actually I'll just speed her up. Now, again, I'd suggest that you don't do this. Four, four times speed is all you can actually do here. I'm just going to let the game sort of play itself out at this point in time. There's really not a lot we can do. Eventually, these guys will be built. This one here is very close now. So this is... Um, actually, this is... A, yeah, that one's already been built. But again, we don't have any armor or shielding. So we've got a new general that's just appeared. We've got discoveries that we're making. So that's actually... So if we look at Issyan 4, we're now up to, up to 10 through here. And that was actually now everything... No, there's still another one that was now an unknown. We've still got unknowns there. And so I think the survey ship is just actually surveying the planet, trying to find out what these other resources actually are. But in reality, like once it's actually ready, I'm not too worried about it going too far away until we get the skip drive. The skip drive is, is pretty much everything at this point in time. Um, I've got all, everything else is running on default in the game at this point in time. And if you're playing pre-warp, just do that. Eventually, if you're playing any of any of the different styles, you're going to be wanting to change what's automated and what's not. So I'll show you that now as well. We've now got a new scientist as well. Now that's going to give us a bit of a boost along. Uh, we've got two and a bit years now left before we get the uh, warp fields. New construction is now completed with the construction ship. So we're going to get these sort of messages coming through. Just dismiss that one. And um, and so what was I talking about? That's right. Eventually, we're going to be wanting to change the um, uh, the parameters of how we actually have things personalized. So if we go across into this area through here, which is actually our, um, uh, this is actually the, uh, what is the talk I'm talking about? This is the Empire screen. So we're going into the Empire screen and through there. Now we've actually found another discovery, and we did actually just find polymer. We've now found 
most of our very, very important basic building blocks right at our home system. We've got steel, we've got carbonite, we've got polymer. We're lucky. You won't find that very often. This has been a lucky start for us. So it means we, even if the pirates come, uh, they're not going to be able to interrupt our what we're doing too much. I'll, I'll do a separate video on pirates and how to deal with pirates, but in this case, we're just going to let things develop. Now, the pirates won't bother us until we become a threat, and the threat is when we start to use hyperdrives. And so the hyperdrives is when it starts to get dangerous, so we need to have a bit of money sort of saved up at that point, ready to protect our, our holdings. Uh, let's just go back across. This is where the automation is. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about automation. This is the uh, Empire screen. The last tab of the Empire screen is the policy settings. And if you just click down the first drop dropdown, uh, you'll, this is sort of like where the general things actually are. Now, I've got this set to default. So I would suggest that you keep that set to default for yourself. When you get sick of certain messages uh, or when you uh, want to do things yourself just feel free to come in and change it change the settings and so the one i tend to like to change myself is fleet formation which are all set to automation at the start so that it will actually build its own ships it will build it will it suggest its own ships but it will then put them into fleets it'll do its own management of the actual fleets itself as well from what it thinks it needs to do now, I prefer to take on that myself, particularly with pirates around, just so I end up with exactly what I want in little fleets. Now, we're going to need potentially two fleets, um, not not initially, one fleet initially, but two fleets ultimately, I think, just to look after the um, after the other, the Caslon supply as well as our home system. So we'll need a couple of fleets of, uh, of, of just small escorts initially. And so I tend to just come back in and change these all back to manual, although the fleet formation, postures, and, and fleet ship management. But if you don't want to, don't do it. But that's actually something I like to do. But just be aware, if something's annoying you, like if there's a lot of if there's a lot of suggestions, these are all suggestions in through here. Like if there's um, suggestions that are coming through about ship construction and you get sick of them, and I do, <laughs> I change that one back to manual. Quite often there'll be base construction saying, hey, we need to build a spaceport here or we need to build a mining station there. Initially, it's really, really helpful. But it, eventually in the game, it becomes painful. And, you, and that one I would just go to automate it. So you just say, hey, look, I don't care, just manage it. But initially, it's good for you to know what the AI is thinking. Uh, the rest of it, yeah, just sort of tweak and change as required. So most of these you can actually override anyway, but uh, I'll just leave, I'll leave for myself a default with these turned off. It's what I like to have at the very, very start. But if you don't want to, don't do it. Uh, I'll just go back and select that one back off and let the game sort of continue. I'll pause this until we start to get some messages and you'll see what I mean. By the way, this little um, survey ship is going to be the only real active ship at start. It's just going to be now zipping around. It's only got an impulse drive. It can hardly do anything, but it can survey different systems. So it's now just going across. It's now going to serve the moon, uh, survey the moon uh, Erinur. So Erinur back in through here is unexplored. It's then going to come through and do a basic exploration. It's going to send away teams down onto the actual moon itself. And eventually, over time, it's going to take like a fair bit of time, it's going to find out information about that particular moon. And so the actual um, the, the process of discovery in this game when you play pre-warp is very, very slow. So just be aware of that. Uh, so it will actually be extremely slow. Anyway, I'll pause again. Actually, it's nearly, nearly done. So we're nearly done through here. Now it did 10 lots of exploration and here it found actually a really good supply of, of steel and Mebnar. Uh, the spaceport has also just been constructed. So we'll, um, we can actually take me to the location. There it is. This is our new spaceport. This gives us some protection as well. So against pirates, pirates are gonna have a hard time uh, fighting against this particular spaceport. The spaceport allows us to build different things. You can see we are making money here. Um, I won't go through the finer points of what to look for. Just be aware, don't overspend your money. <laughs> uh, we've got a little negative in through there. I would love that to be positive, but it doesn't matter if it's a little bit negative. It, it would be much, much better for me because of, of uh, research and growth if it's positive. But if it's not, it's not going not to be the end of the world. And we do have to get protections there. So we'll dismiss that one. Uh, we've made discoveries. There's the, um, there's the uh, Aculon, it is, not Mebna. And, um, and we've actually found a bonus here as well. So we've discovered a hidden, hidden items at the Erinur system. And so there's actually a research bonus. Now this is again, it's now just come up, but 
quite often you won't find these for quite some time. I'll just dismiss that one. It will probably then say, hey, here it is here. It's suggesting we've found a research location. What we should be doing, it's nice and close. Let's use our construction chip and build a uh, research station here. And they're definitely going to do that. This is always a, it's always good to build research stations, and no matter which faction you're playing. So we'll just dismiss that. And so it's then going to go off and the construction ship, which is this one here, will then go and pick up cargo. It'll pick up what it requires from the planet to go and build that particular location. So we'll just see what it's going to do. So it's now, its order is to build the research station. So it's moving in close to, probably close to the starport. Now, remember, we don't have any, any warp drives at this point in time. So we've discovered Mebnar now back in one of these one of these areas so the um, this little survey ship will just sort of hover around in here we're now at 66 percent with our with our research um, I will pause this until we sort of get things happening we'll have a we'll have a look at this one when it actually does get to the spaceport to pick up the resources okay so it's now just getting close it's coming in close to the actual uh, to the space station it's going to basically sort of dock I think I would assume <laughs> Yep, in she goes, lines itself up, in it goes. We'll just watch the cargo, bang, it's full. Now, why did it grab that cargo? So why has it done all that? Again, I'll be explaining this in more depth later on. That's the cost of building the um, that, that uh, research station. And to see that one, we can actually just go across into ship designs, turn off the state ships. In fact, we can go to state bases in this case, which is a research station is there. But in general, you're just going to keep on all types and then you'll get used to what's sort of happening in through here. Research station is there. Just double click it. Uh, sorry, click it and then click on edit. And uh, we'll then go down and see what the cost is. 164 steel, 18 polymer, 16 silicon, 16 mebnar, 12 carbonite, 4 necros stone. If we just cancel that one, go back out again. So 164 steel, etc., etc., etc. So it just got what it requires to then go and build that station. It will now make its way around across to the moon and then build a research station around the moon. And so that's sort of what that's going to go off and do. And so it, it will just keep on prompting us. Um, this is why we don't. I haven't made any actual decisions really uh, at this point in time uh, in the game. I'm just letting the game play itself out. <laughs> and so it's only really when we get to, um, to the point where we've got the this established. That I'm then going to start to make my own decisions. Now, you don't have to again. I'll, I'll actually probably just show you the simple way of not doing it yourself. But if you do want to, you can redesign your own ships. Okay, we've now got hyper, hyperspace technology has now been discovered. And so if I just, I'll just go and uh, dismiss that one and pause it just for a second. A new scientist has appeared with this one as well. So we've now got a new scientist, Hugo Tribolo. We'll just leave that one where that is. We've got the early warp field experiments research completed. This is important. You'll always start this way. Now, the next thing that's coming up is uh, the shielding. So we're going to get shielding first, and then we'll get the... Um, shielding is, is actually more important than armor. They're both important, but shielding, as soon as you... Like, pirates will attack you, uh, and can actually board your ships uh, once they've reduced the shields to zero. If you start without shields, you're already at zero, which means pirates can just board you whenever they like. And so for a pre-warp game, getting shields is actually probably as important as the warp drives themselves. And so I think what I'll do is I might actually go back in. This is now going to be two and a bit years to get this one because we've now got some... Um, we're going, to, we're going to get some research from here. We'll ultimately get more research from over here. So we're going to be rattling through this one. If we just go back into you know, ship designs, if we go back into our research and click on the research tree again and go to energy deflectors, and I can pay the cost 7,477. I will actually pay that one because I want this one as fast as possible as well before I start to, to um, use my escorts. At the moment, if I build an escort and a pirate comes in, um, it's all over, basically. We're not going to be able to survive because they're just going to board it with uh, with their boarding parties. We're not going to be able to fight them off and we're going to lose all of our ships to the pirates. So we don't want that. So we're, it's now asking us to build more exploration ships. We'll now build that one because we can now go through hyperspace. 
Now this will be a trigger. The pirates will now notice us going through hyperspace. They'll start to become interested. And then soon when we start to sort of build other things, they'll then start to come visiting. So if you don't develop very quickly, the pirates tend to stay away for a little while, but eventually they're going to come. Now, it's, um, it's, it, there's no point really stopping what you're doing. The pirates don't destroy infrastructure. They raid it and they take resources. Here we go. Our first hyper jump has now happened. Just dismiss that one. I am playing again at four times speed. Again, I suggest that you don't do that. You are going to miss, um, I guess, the... Um, the interactivity of the actual game itself. I'll just let this thing go up. We're now 34%. It's less than a year now to get this one here. You can see that we're now getting a positive cash flow. New spy has appeared. We've got no, no, no use for the spy at this point in time. Again, I've got everyone, everything's on automatic. All of those characters will just do their own thing. I'm not even managing them at all. I can if I want to, I just don't have to. So new exploration ship has now been completed as well. So we've now got two ships which will now start to go. These have now got hyper, hyper drive. They can go quickly. The, see how this one has gone straight to the Kazlon, potential Kazlon supply. It's, it knows that this is an important one for us to um, to check out. So we've now got the um, another one. It's, it's asking us, hey, uh, we can afford another a survey ship. Let's go and grab one. Now, soon I'm going to tell it not to bother because I will be wanting to save some money to get a handful of escorts, at least three, hopefully five, there we go. So in NDC and five, we've now found Caslon supply, which is our which is our fuel supply. I'll just get rid of all of these. So that's now done. And if it's green like this, it means that there's nothing else to find. So that's actually all okay. Uh, there's no hidden resources. If we go back to our home world, I think we still had a resource there that we can still get, or have we. No, we found everything. We got to level 19, and that was all we needed to do. It's completely explored. There's no other resources. We found five there. Which is good. Construction ship is coming over. It's going to now start to build that research center again. You may not have this when you when you do start a game. It's uh, we're lucky that it was right there, but it, it may not be part of your start. Um, just I'm just going with with the flow. They're finding more resources. We don't need to know much about those. Some of the some of the luxury, uh, some of them are luxury resources. Again, I'll talk about this in another episode about the differences between the different types of resources, what they're what they're good at, what they're not good at. Here we go. We've now got the uh, the early energy deflectors have been researched completely, and so that means that we can, if we wanted to, sort of go through and actually start to now design or, or build our our escorts. The problem we have is we've got no money, so now we have to wait for money. And this is often the problem. We'll now have to wait until we've got a fair bit to go back in. Now, if we go across into our construction queue back and through here and go to ship designs and have a look at the Escort, you'll notice that the Escort is now the Argosia 3. There's been three variations of this Escort in the time that we've actually been playing. And so you can sort of guess what they are. We've got a, we've got a basic Escort with no no shielding and no hyperdrive. Then we had an escort designed automatically by the AI with a hyperdrive. And now we've got an escort that's automatically designed with a hyperdrive and a shield. So that's actually what we're sort of finding in through here. And if I turn off, instead of having all active buildable designs, if I go to all designs, we'll then find there's our three Argosias. Uh, Argosia 1 is, is now obsolete because uh, it's been replaced because it didn't have, like if you just go to edit, I'll just show you what I mean. So there's no hyperdrive in here at all. There's a skip, actually there's a skip drive there. That shouldn't be there on that one. Just cancel that one. Argosia 2, what did you have? That's still got the skip drive. These have all actually got the skip drive on them. I don't know, that, like the very first one where it won't have the skip drive. Uh, this one here will. So that's the last one that we've actually got. This has got seeking missiles on it and a long-range cannon. Uh, so very basic sort of weaponry that it's actually got installed. Um, just see what the others have, have got. Um, edit. Yeah, it's got the same sort of stuff, actually. Anyway, that's um, if we had have built a one of those other uh, versions, the, the first versions, it uh, wouldn't have been able to edit in, in with the skip drive, but this one do, actually does. Anyway, that's uh, I thought it would show up without it, but anyway, that's there are three versions and one of them didn't have the skip drive, but two of them actually are obsolete. Sorry, I should actually just go back and make sure that that's active buildable designs. We'll then just keep everything that's still active that we can actually then go and build. And so these, you can see there the build cost for these guys is uh, 2,700. Let's just say 3,000. To build five of these, we're going to need around about, say, 14 or 15,000. So until we get the 14 or 15,000, we're better off just sitting back 
and uh, and just waiting for the money to cor correct to correct itself. It will eventually do it, but it can take quite some time. There we go. We've now got uh, even our mining ships, and now we've got high, the the small skip drives. And really, we're going to spend a lot of time just in this local system. There we go. We've actually now found a smuggler's den, which was the was the ship that we hadn't had missed out on before. And so we've actually got a pirate base sitting right inside our own own home system. So they will make contact with us very very soon, I would think. And um, and so we then have to figure out what to do with those pirates. We'll probably end up, because they're in our same system, we'll probably end up paying them off, I would think, <laughs> rather than trying to uh, combat them. Um, so we're finding more and more resources. As I say, we're going to find, there we go, the research station is now constructed. Dismiss that one. We don't have any money, so we can't do the, the crash program on that one there. There we go. Assign to build this one. Yes, assign the mission. So we're getting a lot of suggestions just with what to do. We just have to keep track of what the AI wants us to do. And generally, it's, yeah, do it. If you can afford it, do it. Um, so anyway, I might leave this episode here. Uh, that just gives you a bit of a, I guess, a bit of a start with a pre-warp. Uh, it doesn't matter what faction it is. It's going to be the same sort of steps. Um, but it's really just trying to get those first aspects ready for uh, combat with the pirates. Here we go. Mysterious object has um, has been encountered. This will be a Gravelex has actually come into the system. We're not going to be able to counter this at all. We don't have the capacity to do it. Uh, space monsters, we'll just go dismiss. So for us, this is actually a, an issue. They, the Gravelexes do travel around through space and they, um, they're they not super bad. Um, oh, well, somebody, okay, we've got a, the Gravelex carcass. Yeah, we shouldn't have been able to kill that one off. I don't know what's happened. Or maybe we found the carcass there right from the start. So it's coming in with different resources from a, a, a dead Gravelix. Anyway, nothing for us to really worry too much about. Again, our money is, overall cash flow is positive, but our net cash is negative. And so we have to just sit and back and wait. Uh, there's nothing we can do about this. In the meantime, our armor plating is coming up. And if we can get this one, I think I will then wait until I've got this before I start to build the escorts. So the escort, I've waited for the skip drive, the um, the all important shields to go up against pirates, and the uh, and the armor plating. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it here. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying the series, and hope this has been helpful. If you sort of are trying to get into the game, you see that I've I've actually made zero decisions really. I've all I've really done is just gone yes, go, yes, approve, and now and. Uh, I understand what's happening in the game, which is probably the difference. Like if you're new to the game, it may you may feel a little bit lost about what's going on, but don't feel that you have to be pushing decisions in a certain way at this at this stage. Just go along for the ride. Let the story develop. Uh, we're just finding more and more stuff. We can I'll just leave all them alone. But by all means, read all of this stuff. Just get involved in the story uh, that sort of plays out in front of you. You will have an opportunity uh, as the game develops to then make some decisions. You will have some choices to make, particularly when the pirates start to come initially, about how you're then going to deal with them. If you can't afford it, uh, you know, you can't afford to pay as well, then that's, that becomes a, even a, another problem. Uh, here we go. We're finally sort of hitting the... Uh, we hit the, hit the black instead of the red there for a sh very short period of time. <laughs> but we will, will eventually correct itself as we get more and more resources into our home territory. We may just have to suck up the pirates and just let it happen. Like it's, um, if we if we can't deal with them, we just can't deal with them. Uh, we can't, certainly can't afford to pay for them. Uh, this is going to be so we we really just going to have to let them do their attacks and just sort of uh, let it actually happen in this in this sort of instance. We've almost got the next like the the actual armor plating as well. So we're actually rattling through the uh, the research at this point in time, but our money is dire. Anyway, I'll leave it there. There we go. We just discovered uh, silicon. This is another important resource. Um, so silicon is, a, is one of the important ones. Um, the plating has now been researched as well. Just dismiss that one. The next one we had lined up was the countermeasure system. And that's pretty much all we've got. So we can't actually, we can't queue anything up. We need 2,000 to be able to queue up another. Actually, no, I think we can do the um, the level zero tech. So I keep on clicking on that one. It's this one here. But just find what you sort of think you might need. Uh, we've got target tracking coming after this one. Uh, we've got basic transport systems, we troop uh, and passenger components. We won't worry about those just yet. Basic space commerce. This is a commerce center. We might sort of throw that one in there as well to get some more money. Medical systems will sort of help with the uh, with the the um, uh, medical ratings on the planets and things. So we'll grab that as well. 
just get what you need. These don't cost anything to actually go and buy these ones, except for the crash programs. Um, in terms of of combat capabilities, I'm sort of happy enough with what we've currently got. And we just can't afford to buy anything from this next column until we get up to about 2,000. So uh, we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching.